you haven't ventured into the Dagon Dungeon, the Sunken City, I don't blame you. It's a bit of a daunting place and a little bit hard to find. But today's guide, I'm going to show you just why you want to venture here. You can learn awesome weapon recipes here, be able to learn a fish trap that you can get cool buff fish from, and you can get some really nice heals. They're a little bit expensive, but they're very good. It's a great source of glowing goop. And there's a bunch of really awesome boxes that you can get some pretty awesome beginner loot out of. Well, endgame loot, but awesome if you're a beginner. I've even found boxes with lots of dragon powder in here. And flotsam crates floating all about the place. Which, when opened, can give you fun supplies for building or think Sipter if you've played on there and found the flotsam floating about. There is lots of places you can find it in the Exiled Lands now, but it's uh, pretty reliable around these parts. As uh, these dudes do hit hard, they're pretty easy to take down if you have a thrall. They, I'm in admin mode, so they're not attacking me. It's the most part though you can run past them and touch the recipe you no longer have to be level 60 to touch them but you may have to be to get the resources to craft them like weapon handles and such although you can easily find them out of certain boxes and those flat sam crates often drop them so it's one of the places i like to dip into even if i'm not ready to go touch all the recipes some of the boxes are pretty easy to get to even without all the other stuff that's ideal to come here if you're going to run the dungeon having breathing potions is quite heavy but is probably your easiest access to breathing underwater currently killing pirates gives you pretty easy access access to them and you can craft some in your cauldron although i think maybe you need to do the dregs dungeon to get that unlocked not 100 yes you do need the dregs dungeon to unlock the breathing potion dregs dungeon is located here and you don't need to run the whole thing you just did need to dip into the beginning part and touch the tablet and leave alternatively you can wear an underwater breathing mask it won't give you infinite breathing neither will the potions but it does add up and you can drink it in combination with potions and it's fairly easy to come by by killing animal tamers or the beast tamer tamos in the the Buccaneer Bay area. You can usually find one facilitating with a cat and they're pretty easy to kill with their no HP. And they pretty much always guaranteed drop this guy. In fact, I'm, it's always guaranteed, not even pretty much. And you can get some night vision dust off them too. And there's a few more up on like this level over here. And then a whole lot on the ledge over on this bit where Tamos resides. You can tame him. He makes fairly decent thrall. He used to be way better, but he was the original source of the water mask and now they all drop them, so yay. You can also run the Jebel Sarg dungeon, which is a fairly easy dungeon. It's really good to do if you're leveling up. Lots of Amanita mushrooms in there, lots of animals to skin. Very good for leveling thralls. Located just here. At the end of it, you can eat the flesh and then you can get the ability to make the Feast of Jebel Sarg, which also gives you underwater breathing and it lasts quite a while and isn't too heavy and can be used in combination with all the masks and the potions, but will override any other food buffs like your exotic feast. Or if you already have access to the cooked fish buffs, it'll replace those two. But if you'd like something a bit more reliable and gives you infinite breath as long as you are holding it, you can get the Riptide. By coming over to the unnamed city and venturing into the spawning pools, you will find Zira the Mother. There is now a guaranteed drop of a legendary off them regardless, so it's pretty worthy to come venture. She also drops a lot of volatile glands and horns. Horns are specifically very handy if you are leveling up sorcery, but come in handy for a bunch of stuff too. She is not too hard to kill these days, but I will just quickly admin kill her for the sake of time. Sorry for the people that offends. Happen to get a torch of the red mother this time which is a uh, excellent torch i'll take it but kill her a bunch of times and you get a chance to get the riptide i will be fighting most of the enemies in the dungeon to demonstrate their hardness and um, once they're demonstrated i'll probably just run past them or admin kill them but the bosses i will be fighting so you can see their excellent behavior and how joyous they are to fight i also advise bringing some other type of buffs this random crap sickle for harvesting goop if you so desire some bandages for healing when you're outside of battle probably bring a sandstorm mask because the dungeon used to get bugged out and get sandstorms in there they've allegedly fixed that but mm. and i generally like to travel with some encumbrance gear like a backpack and some lasting feasts my boots do have encumbrance on them being godbreaker and they do also heal my non-legendary weapons when i'm holding them and get hit so i don't necessarily need to bring repair kits for say my momentum if you don't have access to legendary stuff or haven't run the dungeon to get that things like obsidian maces superman dragon bone pretty easy to come by although legendaries are so easy to come by now and you can run this dungeon with lower gear stuff with a friend with a thrall thralls do tend to get by out a little bit don't love to use them some type of delicious feast that will help your stamina regen and i also like to bring cooked pork feasts of snacks because it does food and water not that you need water too much in there because you're swimming in it and some type of other buffs strength buffs and then i can replace that later with an encumbrance buff if i so need now it is probably going to bite me in the ass that i haven't gone all four tiers of strength because i do usually use strength weapons you can certainly go an agility strength vitality build for this and get your rolling thrust and use a lot less stamina but i find this build works pretty 
really well for me doing PvE situations. I get a decent amount of stamina and stamina regen there. I can carry myself, my armor, and bits I wish to. Glutton for Punishment is highly advisable when fighting big enemies because you can avoid them for a little bit and regen saves on health and um potions. And yeah, like I said, whichever strengths or agility that you're going for, strength's going to give you a bit more encumbrance also. But that fourth perk, really nice with Blood Mad Berserker. Mm, probably will need up the last trick. We'll see. Although dying in the dungeon, you'll just spawn in the dungeon, which is why your thralls can bug out swimming a little bit. Now you're all prepared. Make your way over to the Dagon's Embrace. You'll find yourself a butt. Touch that butt. And you'll spawn in at a little dock. You can touch the butt to leave again if you do not wish to be here. You can swim all the way around the, the island and find a bunch of boxes that we'll look at later because, like I mentioned earlier, there can be some awesome stuff in there. You can run up here and fight the first boss or avoid him, which is what I usually do. Just touch that weapon and run away. If you wish to make the quick way in, you can dip down here, avoid those guys and jump in that way. Or you can go the standard way. Let me exit creative mode. Touch the guy on the way past. Don't bother fighting him. Wee, multiple journey steps. I think that's because I'm level 60 now. There's a bunch of dudes lurking. They're not too hard. They're also pretty easy to avoid. If you kill them, you will get Lemurian armor, which is a nice armor. Especially if you've come in here kind of naked and you're cheesing dudes or anything like that. It is a strength for the most part armor and um, yeah, it's a really nice medium armor. Used to be able to get it at a bunch of different places, but they've changed that. There's a little box just here where you can get some planting supplies usually. There's generally themes to these boxes, so you'll find out ones that you want to visit more than others. I do believe that butt does nothing. Just another butt that I cannot climb. Like I said, I'll go through where a bunch of these boxes are afterwards. But there's a heap of them about. I usually like to make my way into this one first and like do a little bit of a zigzag. If you are farming scales, you don't want to go into one of the temples and I'll show you that when we're there. Make your way in. Ooh, so much cooling down. Again, you can fight these guys. They'll drop pearls and you can, well, the boss dudes, like the one we ran past for the axe recipe, and they will then give you the ability to buy stuff off a certain thrall in Buccaneer Bay. When you talk, you can get clusterfucked in there, so avoid that. He's not too bad. But if we swing out something like this bad boy, there's definitely worse bosses than others. Whoa. And you can certainly just avoid his attacks also. I'm wearing a fair chunk of armor, so that helps me not die. And I got a Takedo tablet off him also, which can be used to summon zeal, which is nice little sacrifice or learn the Takedo religion if you don't have it. And they have buffed the amount of pearls it would seem, which is worthy. They can also be skinned for god souls and pides. And as we probably weren't paying attention, it was the sword and shield we learned here. You can generally tell what you'll learn by what the weapon the boss in the room is using. So if you can't be bothered to get that one, you don't have to. Though some of them are a bit more sneaky and there are some rooms that don't even have tablets in them at all. You can get these type of boxes on the way past, but like I said, I will go into a bunch of them later. Though some of them are definitely more worth checking than others. Then you can go into this one or that one. I like to go into this one. Try to remember to equip your um, stuff you need. You can also feel free to actually eat your buffs that now you're in here. So that'll help you out a bit too. You can't heal while you're swimming. So keep that in mind. You may need to stand on a little ledge, do a little bit of healing. This guy is a bag of dicks. That pike of his is the worst. On private servers, it was banned from getting him as a thrall because of how many bags of dicks that pike is. And you could uh, spawn him in and get that pike. Oh. No. I'm a bit rusty. I've been playing a lot of other games, so controllers are hard. These specific fish dudes, you can skin or use a pick on to get some scales. Sometimes they drop them in their inventory. They've moved his tablet over here. And you'll learn the Lemurian Trident, which is a fairly decent trident. I do believe they've changed its movesets, but don't hold me to that because I don't use pikes often. 
Now from the dungeon we just came out, again you can go in there or over here. I'll generally come over here first. And this place sucks. It's almost the only reason to bring a thrall in here because there's so many of them. I don't usually fight them unless I am farming all those scales because they are again so many bags of dicks. A little bit easier now that they have lowered the health, hence why I'm remaking this video because I've changed a lot of stuff since I last did it. You aggro things. These um, blasts aren't good because they poison you. Poison, not ideal. Having curatives can help a little bit with that. I don't have any curatives. I'm going to just try and out heal it, which is where having fast healer can help and glutton for punishment. But you got to try and like uh, not take extra ticks of damage. This guy. Things like the dragon bone stuff has bleed and sunder, so it's kind of handy for taking these guys out quickly because they'll bleed out and the sunder takes away any of their armor. And you can put poison on serpent man things, so keep that in mind. Another decado tablet. And you can pickle them, or skin them, and get your little scales. What do we get off him? Lemurian language. The tablet I could not find for a second. And that's Dragon's Breath, which is another type of underwater breathing potion, and I don't think I've ever actually used it. Hence why I don't usually come in here unless I am farming for those scales, because there's a fair few dudes in here. And I usually avoid that guy. But with some armor, as you see, one too bad. Now that they've, they've reduced their HP a bunch. From here, I head directly across. Now the couple of little boxes along the way. Great place to farm gold and silver in here, and I'll show you why in a moment. This room pretty much specifically has gold and silver boxes in it, and you can just keep farming it throughout your runs of the dungeon, and it adds up pretty quickly. There is no tablet in here though, so you can leave. So if you're trying to get that first purge up, or you want to buy a few things from some merchants, it's a pretty decent place to dip into. As you can swim down there and survive without any breathing stuff, it just cuts it a little bit close. Now I usually go into here. Just depend though, sometimes I mix up my run. This is technically noxious gas. It won't hurt you too much unless you linger, so don't do that. Every now and then you can find boxes hiding in it down in the little valley part of the gully. This room is specifically very fun because you can pick up these locust babies in here. They don't look like the locust babies, but that's what they are. They'll keep spawning and you can get a million, which are really good for base defense. They're pretty easy to tame in an animal pen. I think they take like rotten flesh to get a chance for a greater. And they're very good at poisoning stuff. They're also very annoying when you're fighting this guy. And a great source of Ica. If you uh, keep killing them, you can keep harvesting them for a bunch of ichor. I find that there are better ways to get ichor, but it's definitely an option. This guy needs to die. They don't usually drop anything in their inventory, and they will drop lots of rotten meat on occasion too, but just then I got a butt ton ichor. I am on four times harvest, so... And this is the room that you learn the fish traps to get those buffed fish. Water buttons. I don't need the locust babies, so I'm gonna drop them. And because you can't heal in the water, having things like the cook pork face is really good because it does do 12 sated. I head across to this next temple. You can touch the box. We'll wait for Ron. This room is the room that you learn these potions. And you can sometimes find scrolls for sorcery about here. Whoop, like that one. Oh, I needed that. No, I forgot I was holding it. You throw your riptide back so that you can pick it up as long as you see where you throw it. I could definitely fight them more effectively. <laughs> you drop some treasure. I have my Lemurian aloe extract and I shall leave. Now most of these other temples are pretty empty. There's a box here and there that I'll show you in a little bit, but essentially you want to save this one for last because it is in fact the exit. Once you go all the way down, you can't come back up very easily, but you can always just come and re-enter the dungeon. Isn't too bad. It's what we're going to do here today. 
Okay, so for the most part, you can actually run between these and the, the top of the water and survive with no breathing assistance, but it is a bit sketchy. So I would like to put away my Riptide before I throw it again. These dudes you can free and then kill. There are levers about the place, so I'm gonna go find those. Just here. They'll close after a time, so... Yeah, but they'll also fight these dudes who aren't really worth killing. Sometimes they'll try and fight you, but there are boxes in here. Very worthy boxes. Now because this is going to close before I can get up there, I will probably just wait around and um, kill these guys if the game will let me move. Nope, I'm going to get clustered in a corner. We love to see it. Never. I win. Use some heals. <laughs> More Lemurian tablets. This is a very good way to harvest some zeal. Because every one of those is like 10 or 20 zeal. So now we run back up this way and we'll have access to that first gate. And the people you shall need to kill. Or variant levels of difficulty. Well, excuse you, sir. Don't wish to be trapped. Nice stuff. I do believe if you get trapped on the inside, you can yourself. All of these guys can be skinned for scales or picked and you're probably going to have to drop your random trash periodically. Now you're going to find some more gates and you're going to have to run back to that lever and open it again. I vaguely recall there being more than one lever but no, maybe I dreamt it. Oh, good nail though. It will free the guys. Sometimes you'll have to go in there and like aggro them out. Oh, no, 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 no. And again, repeat the process until you've gotten all the dudes and boxes out of there that you so desire. Down here we'll find another fisherman. An easy fisherman. And we're getting to the part of no return. Sorry if the background voice is a little loud. There'll be some more slugs that you can pick up or slay in here. And I do believe a couple of boxes can't go in there. But there's no boxes in here. But there was. You can pick up this torch and get yourself a free glowing torch. Once you go down here, you can't come back up very easily and you want to jump down level by level and wait for probably a glutton for punishment to regen you because it's quite the fall. The next level. Oop. And so you think you're healed enough. Now this lady, she sucks a lot. And there's a lot of other shitty people in here. So there's a solid chance I'm gonna die. We shall see. Big fisherman. Try and take a screenshot and I literally have to press alt to do that and alt <laughs> currently is... I need to reset my keybinds. If you have a bow and arrow you can lure them out one by one and I definitely advise taking out the small guys first and the medium guy. Eee. These guys suck. Everyone sucks. <laughs> Whoa, laggy gl glitchy bit. Love that for me. And every time you're hit, you can then just like avoid them until you regen. But what's the fun in that? I'd rather smack them about and tank them a little bit. Wasn't too bad. Uh, might be a different matter. Probably take out the little guys because they're annoying. Ah. Okay, swap my keybinds to the wrong keybinds. This is definitely death. I conveniently have Kate loot on death. You might not, and that could be very frustrating to get stuff back. But you generally get the point. You want to be quite prepared for taking on that room. Or at least put in any effort to avoiding them. If you do happen to make it back here in a timely manner, they'll all still be dead. So that is fun. And it is the reason why I like to carry spare potions as death. You will need to restart. Probably fill up my pots a bit. Or I can't because I'm healing. So some potions are pretty much as good as each other, they just work a little bit quicker. Turns out the exit room portals are now open, which is nice. Don't even have to kill her to leave the dungeon. 
So that's a hack that I didn't really anticipate before now. Ah, not again! You can try and jump off here and gain yourself a little bit of time to bandage and cure those bleeds. Ah, you used to be able to roll out of out of that, but for some reason you can't now. And that almost ended in my death again. My glutton for punishment ain't helping me much here. She's almost dead though, so you can just keep running little circles till you have back a decent amount of health. Just avoid her little attacks. Now these guys don't cure quite as much, but they do work much faster, which is why I changed over to them. Well, now we want to wait for her to do a bit of an attack, and uh, we weren't planning on getting caught in the attack, but it happens sometimes. She is almost dead, but so am I. Ah! I win. That was close. <laughs> Got some eyes of set, which are much like the Takedo tablets. You can eat them to learn the Takedo religion, or you can sacrifice them in an altar to get a bunch of zeal. I honestly really hate fighting her, but even trying to get past her to get the dagger tablet is just very hard. There are a fair few boxes in here, so you can bring a fair few legendary keys. It is nice though, because skeleton keys now stack, so you don't have to waste a whole bunch of inventory slots gathering your chests. Some pretty decent acquisitions. Now the two ways you can leave here, either this way which will leave you into the new beach area, or we can go this way and this will lead us back out towards the butt, which is where we're going to go because we're going to go back in and adventure around some of those boxes. Back out at the butt, swinging about like a mad maniac. You can also touch this and get a shitty little ore weapon, not worthy though. Then for this trip, I will be in admin mode because it's a lot easier to fly around, it's a bunch quicker. I don't have to worry about drowning. You can start off around here, there's a lot less boxes in this side of the water, but you can find a few around these boats. Predominantly gold and silver. So again, this is a really good place to come and get some early game gold and silver just for the ease that it is to get some of this stuff here. And then there's a whole vast emptiness of wasteland and then eventually a barrier that you cannot get past. Every now and then on the surface you will also find that flotsam floating, so it's good to, to check there every now and then. Around the back of these you can't get that way, but there is a way to get back there that I might show. Good point is to always look at the ships to find the gold and silver ones, and some of the KV Nook bits can yield, and the um, ledges, yield some rare resource boxes. Now mind, I don't know where every single box is because there's a butt ton here. Rare resource box with potions. We're just outside that first temple for a reference, a bit underneath the butt. Pretty easy to see most boxes, but there are some hiding in little nooks. That is not the correct little nook. Neither is that. And every now and then in these little plumes of noxious gas, you can also find a box or two, but not every single one of them. They might just get gassed out for no reason. This pretty decent box just over here that has building supplies sometimes is empty. Right underneath it, this box can sometimes have dragon powder in it, which is real nice. Another box outside the temple. There's usually one or two just right outside the temples. On this ledge next to the temples, those ones are on the other side. These resource boxes can also yield some dragon powder and some other good stuff. And the ledge above again has a couple of little boxes. Really good resources to touch early game. For some reason I thought one was here, but maybe not. Might be around the other side. No flood sand, but there is a sandstorm, so that does still happen. If I wasn't in admin mode, I'd probably be getting sandstormed. But regardless, it makes it very unpleasant to be here. 
and I can't see anything for a moment. So that's cool. Guess I'll wait. Like some type of strange aquatic ghost rave. Love it when they fix their game. Hate to be negative, but like makes it hard to feel film guide sometimes. Just saying. And now I have visibility again. Just. My visibility isn't being great right now. But just because I'm in the mood to show you weird glitchy shit that this game has. Notice this is a solid wall. Not so solid now. Like, keep in mind, in single player, I won't die, but in multiplayer, touching bits of mesh area sometimes leads to death. Swim in here lightly. Don't swim in here lightly, rather. You can swim into some of these kind of more pointless looking temple areas and find some boxes on the backside. And, well, that was a terrible example. And some on the inside also. There's a couple every now and then out here, but I don't advise adventuring out here because it's pretty easy to get stuck in little mesh green wall holes. And it's hard to backtrack your way out. So if you're not on single player, don't do that. See, so like now, I can't get back out and I've just managed to do it. Lucky. I'm still probably stuck in some weird area. I am. I can't get back over there. Yeah, good example to not do that. That got me out. But yeah, it's pretty easy to get stuck in there, so don't do that. There's none that I've really ever found in these tops of the temples, but behind the whole area, you can come and find a couple more boxes. There they go. Every now and then again, you'll find flat sams floating about up top, so it's worth going and checking out the more little boxes. It's not really worth venturing into the chasms to find those few gold and silver boxes scattered about. And we're back at the beginning. There are a couple every now and then out and about in the world, none up here. But you will find some like here and stuff. So have fun adventuring around this random little jungle island dungeon. I hope you found this informative and if you haven't already, smash that like button and consider subscribing and until next time, stick around for one of these other helpful Conan Exiles guides and I hope you have an excellent day, evening, night, morning, whatever it may be, whatever you may be, have a good one.